What's going on everybody? This is Ultima iDevice Vids, and today in this video we're going to be doing a speed test between the iPhone 12, the iPhone 11, and the iPhone 10R. So these devices are Apple's latest three generations of non-pro offerings for phones, and we're going to be doing a variety of tests, including a boot up test, an app launching test, a web browsing test, a face ID test, and a geek bench test, and an Intuitu benchmark test. And all right, with the 12 on the right, the 11 in the middle, and the 10R on the left, let's go ahead and get started with the boot up test. So we're gonna turn all these devices off and then connect them to a power strip. And then we're gonna turn the power strip on, which will power on the iPhones all at the same time. And I'm actually not gonna cut anything out of this sequence. Of course, I want you guys to see the uncut boot up time for all these devices head to head. Definitely keep in mind that boot up tests aren't representative of how the device is gonna perform in all areas, but it's just interesting to see. So interestingly enough, the 10R actually booted up first, then the 12 and then the 11. So definitely an interesting result there. And with the app switchers cleared on all devices, let's go ahead and do some app launching tests. So we're gonna start off with some lighter applications. And you can see here for these lighter apps, the differences are negligible between all the devices. Although you can definitely see the minor advantage on the newer devices with a lot of these applications just with a half a second or so, particularly on the 10R. And making our way to some lighter games like Subway Surfers, you can see here, again, it goes straight down the line, 12, 11, 10R. But as I often find myself saying in this type of video, it's a pretty minor difference and you probably wouldn't even notice in day-to-day -day life. It's just because we're comparing them head-to-head, -head, of course, it's going to show. And moving on to Minecraft now on all devices, interestingly enough, in this case, it actually opens up first on the 10R and then on the 12 and 11 at about the same time. So yet again, an interesting result there. Moving on to Temple Run, uh, pretty much straight down the line, going from 12, 11, 10R, but again, a very small difference. And now we're going to move to some heavier games, starting off with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So open that up here. And of course, the most important thing for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is actually starting the game itself. So we're going to do that simultaneously on all devices here. And you can see here the result is basically straight down the line once again. Again, just with a extremely small uh, difference between each device. Next up, we're going to load Asphalt 9 on all these devices. And this application takes quite a while to load on all of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed up here until one of them opens it up. And no surprise, it's the iPhone 12 first shortly followed by the 11, and then a little bit while later, the 10R finally catches up and opens it. Of course, Asphalt 9 being a very CPU intensive app, it can take quite a while to load. And lastly, I wanna launch the camera application at the same time on all of them, and you can see they're pretty much negligible, just that maybe little split second of a delay with the 10R in terms of pulling up the camera interface itself. All right, and with the app switchers cleared on all devices, we're gonna do a consecutive app launching test, launching the same applications on all three devices, one after the next, and showing them side by side to show any speed difference. So starting off with some light applications, you can see there, again, the 12 and 11 certainly do have the advantage there, the 12 obviously being in the lead. And you can see there for the lighter applications, it's an extremely small difference. And basically the same principle applies to some of these lighter games like Subway Surfers, as you can see here. And once we reach some of these slightly heavier games like Minecraft here, you you can see the newer devices do, you know, start to take a little bit of a more substantial lead as of course they're just more CPU intensive. And once again, of course, as to be expected, the 10R definitely shows this difference the most out of all of them, it being a device that is now three generations old. But that being said, again, it's just because we're comparing them head to head that this is even noticeable. I think that's definitely worth mentioning. And again, moving on to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And then after that, we're going to do Asphalt 9 as well. Again, those are, you know, the two biggest applications, the biggest, most CPU intensive games in this test. And again, you could definitely see, uh, you know, the more CPU intensive, of course, the better the newer devices handle it. But all in all, as you can see, all three of these devices are doing a great job launching these apps. And all right, it shouldn't come as any surprise that the iPhone 12 finished this consecutive app launching test first, and then of course, followed by the 11, and then a little bit later, followed by the 10R as well. And all right, the 10R is on to Asphalt 9, the last application. And all right, so the app just finished loading. And all right, so the 10R has completed the consecutive app launching test. So once again, very solid performance throughout the app launching tests on all three of these devices. And next up, I'd like to run a synchronized face ID test, tapping the screen at the same time, just with the phones each facing me. And as you can see, they're blazing fast on all these devices. And real quick, we're just going to visit a few websites in Safari. Of course, this largely depends on your internet connection, but you can see there for apple.com, absolutely nothing to complain about. And the same thing with theverge.com, as to be expected, very quick on all of them. Next, we're going to run a Geekbench test on all three of these. So we're going to open up a Geekbench and run a benchmark. And I'll come back to you guys with the results.
And as to be expected, steady improvements from device to device in the single core and multi-core scores. And lastly, we're going to run an Intuitu benchmark test as well, and I'll come back to you guys with the results. And once again, same thing to report here, steady improvements across the board. And in conclusion, as you've seen throughout this video, all three of these devices are quite powerful and are all great devices to use in 2020 and going into 2021. And regardless of which device you use, it's always nice to see steady improvements in performance from generation to generation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.